Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be in internet land, and welcome to the MMA Shower, episode 11, sponsored by Hatton James Legal. For all your employment law needs, please go to hattonjameslegal.co.uk. In this episode, we'll preview UFC 228, Tyron Woodley versus Darren Till. We'll also have a brief preview of Canelo versus Triple G. Before we get into the into the show, we'll go through the usual how to contact the show. So you can email the show. You can uh, email the show on the MMA Shower Seven. That's the MMA Shower Number Seven at gmail dot com. Uh, you can contact the show via Twitter. The Twitter handle is at g the MMA Shower at g the MMA Shower. And of course, you can get get hold of us on Facebook at Let's Talk MMA. That's the uh, page. Let's Talk MMA. Just a couple of more things to inform you about. I now write a column for a website called purelymma.co.uk, which is run by uh, a very good person, Matthew Penny. So that's www.purelymma.co.uk, where we have fight announcements and uh, other fantastic columns as well. Right, moving into the actual... uh, meet of the show we've got uh, some guests returning from uh, previous shows the three wise men i think possibly Um, in no particular order i'll uh, start off with uh, the uh, gentleman on my left harvey how are you yeah i'm not too bad Uh, glad to be here Um, looking forward to uh, doing the show again and we're gonna give a prediction at the end of the show for the uh, woodley till and Canelo versus Triple G, so that will give you a few minutes to think about it. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, next to him is Pretty Boy. How are you? I'm um, very good, thanks. How are yourself? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Looking forward to uh, giving some analysis to the show again, so hopefully we can uh, get going quick. Okay, and last but not least, it's uh, KV. Great to be back. Thank you for uh, giving me the call up again. Look forward to discussing things into detail. Okay, excellent. So, uh, yeah, we're uh, around the table and we're going to go straight into <coughs> UFC 228. And that is being head- headlined by Tyron Woodley and uh, Darren Till. I just want to go around uh, the the guests and just get their initial 30-second view of the main o- event. So, uh, starting with Harvey. Um, it's an interesting fight. Um, I think... On the face of it, obviously Tyron Woodley is uh, an experienced veteran, um, and then you've got obviously the young, up and coming titan that is uh, Darren Till. Uh, he brings a lot of excitement, and uh, I think uh, to the fans, uh, it's a difficult one to court. If I was obviously we're leaving the predictions later on, um, but I think it's a it's a fifty fifty fight. Okay, um, yeah, so. that's that's fine for the opening uh, statement. Pretty boy. Yeah, I think it's mm. definitely a very good matchup. Um, they both got their strengths and they both got their weaknesses, which I think, if well, if if they can get exposed in that situation, then I think Woodley uh, should be should be beating him with the experience and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay, and KV. Yeah, I'm excited for this matchup. I think it's needed for the division because there's a there has been a bit of uncertainty with Colby Covington coming to the scene, having the interim title, all that being stripped. So I think this will stabilise the division again and kind of get things moving forward. So I think it will be a really good matchup. Yeah, cool. Um, I I think it's uh, <coughs> to echo KV's points. It's the division since Woodley has um, uh, sort of been champion, which is probably two years ago when he knocked out uh, Robbie Lawler. Yeah. Uh, he's had two defenses against uh, Wonder Boy. Yeah. First one was a draw. Second one was uh, obviously a lot closer, but uh, Woodley prevailed. And then that uh, non fight shall we call it or non-event that was uh, against Damien Meyer oh. <laughs> which had the record the worst record you can have for the least punches thrown the least kicks and the least action minutes and mm. whatever other stat you want to come up with where there's no fighting involved <laughs> Woodley probably holds it and, and Damien Meyer takes two to uh, tango <laughs> so uh, I think Ngannou and uh, oh that yeah, 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 yeah. I think that's definitely it beat up, it yeah, yeah. <laughs> And the worst thing is, two big guys like that, you wouldn't expect uh, ballet dancing, really. Yeah, especially with their previous records as well. Yeah, the knockouts yeah. in their records combined, it must be at least 15, 20. Uh, but yeah, so uh, I think he'll give stability. Colby, can he call himself unlucky? 
probably or, uh, the, the chain of events was that they wanted a fight in I think it's in Texas uh, they needed a main event for uh, October Colby when he fought uh, Dos Anjos in back in May was it April, right about May, yeah um, hurt his hand apparently he said he's going to be operated on won't be ready until December and UFC said uh, sorry we're going to get a main event anyway until got the call but uh, moving from the uh, politics aside and, and why but we, we are where we are and it's uh, Woodley versus Till so I'm going to start off with KV and I'm going to say um, give me your reasons now this may not be your pick but give me your reasons why Woodley could win this fight. Yeah, so I think Woodley's got a few key things to victory or key points that he's really good at. So I think one of the things that he does really well is his threat of wrestling. So it's probably one of his most underutilized tool, but it's almost a really good defense where people are afraid to attack him with a wrestling base or are afraid to overexpose their legs due to his um, excelling skills in wrestling or really throw their punches yeah. where they so forget about the takedown yeah exactly so they're always worried about the <clears> takedown and they're not going to lean forward as much exactly yeah. and they can't really give it all they've got just in case and and it's really interesting because a lot of the strong wrestlers in the division not only will they threaten with that like Daniel Cormier they'll also use it whereas Woodley he almost opens up a lot of his striking with just the threat of takedowns or having having that on the opponent's mind um, so I think Till's got to be aware of that, and, and he will be aware of that. Um, and then the the main thing is, I think Woodley's one of the best counter strikers in in the whole organisation. Um, he's very patient, which helps his counter striking. And I think that will complement his style very well because Till's very aggressive. And um, so I think the threat of wrestling and the um, key counter strike. But Woodley. Till Till is I know what you mean by aggressive. He moves forward, yeah. and he sort of just keeps moving forward until you, you know, obviously hit him and hit him hard. But if you look at Till, he, he's, he moves forward, but he's sort of waiting for you to make a strike, to yeah. get, it, get him off your back, and then he'll counter-strike. So yeah. Till's like, a, a, like an aggressive counter-striker, yeah. not traditionally in the back foot counter-striker. Yeah, he moves forward to engage, I know yeah. what you mean, uh, which could provide a bit of a stalemate there, a bit like or Wonderboy. Or Woodley could do what he did to Laura and just take and just his lights out. Yeah, yeah, so... I think for Woodley, yeah, it will be in his power and his threat of wrestling, which I think, as normal, I don't think he'll use his wrestling that much because he seems to stray away from it. I think he's probably got one of the lowest takedown records or attempts for such a strong wrestling base or such a successful wrestler, um, which just shows that's not how he likes to win his fights. Having said that, he is very patient and he, he doesn't normally try to rush things. So I think, yeah, his, his patience and counter striking is what's going to give him the victory if, in fact, he wins. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, pretty boy? Yeah, I'd have to agree with um, KV on this one in terms of uh, Woodley's wrestling strengths. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> he, he's, he's an NCAA, NCAA Division yeah. One wrestler. Um, yeah. he, he doesn't show it a lot in fights, as KV said, that he, ca he has that calibre of wrestling, but the base and the foundation of his MMA style is wrestling from wrestling background. So I think if he can get Till down, Till will have a difficult time getting back up. Um, I think it was against Donald Cerrone, um, even though uh, Till easily uh, won that fight, he got taken down by Cerrone, and Cerrone is, isn't much of a wrestling, has a wrestling Third base. Degree. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, he's more stand up with his Muay Thai. He's not known for his wrestling, yeah. Exactly, yeah. So but he managed to take Till down, whether that was from inexperience from Till, uh, I'm not too sure. He, he did take him down, but then to be fair to Till, he got very quickly from it. Yeah. Uh, but I think if Woodley can, uh, he can, he can get that wrestling going within the matchup and keep it close quarters, he'll be able to. But there's a, a big difference when someone like Cerrone, who's not a traditional American wrestler, mm. NCAA, like mm -hmm. you said, mm -hmm. takes you down. And when someone who is NCAA takes you down, yeah, exactly. getting back up from them guys is different to an MMA wrestler in sure sure I mean I think it will a be big power discrepancy there as well yeah there is Cerrone it. used to be 155 didn't he yeah yeah Whereas Woodley's a very big middle yeah, yeah. that's a good um, point um, well, well, Cerrone well, probably sorry. came in at 170 that night mm, mm. yeah and probably, probably walks around at 175 178 yeah, yeah. I mean, there's whispers of Woodley walks around 200 mm. uh, I know we had that altercation with Bisping where they tried to uh, book in a fight themselves backstage and they were offering each other 
Um, you know, they tried to, I think they agreed on they'd have a super fight at 180, 185. It never materialised. Yeah. But Woodley then said to Bisping, I'm walking around at 200. So he's quite a big guy himself. Yeah, so moving on to Harvey, just uh, on your strengths of Woodley? Or? Um, I think obviously the lads here have touched upon his wrestling, but I think his ability just to sound bad as it sounds, bore his opponent. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, just grind him down. He's prepared down. to not engage Yeah, he's if, not interested. if he's in danger. He's, like, he's not interested in a, a popularity contest with the, with the crowd. Um, he just wants to get the job done, which is fair enough. Um, obviously, if you're looking for excitement, Woodley's not going to be the, the go-to fighter or your first fighter. That you which is of. which is weird um, because I agree with you. That's his recent history. Yeah. But he knocked out, Robbie literally Lawler, knocked yeah. out Robbie. Wait, yeah, Robbie Lawler, yeah. Josh Koscheck. He knocked yeah. him out on his feet. Mm. Literally sat mm. him down. Uh, was it Don Ying Kim? He knocked out. And um, mm. but I know what you mean. He, in the recent fights with Thompson and obviously well, Maya. when the opportunity is there then he will go off, go for a knockout so he's got another thing he's got that weapon of that obviously uh, knockout power he's really explosive I think that's his yeah. big game as well. he'll, he'll move in bursts and, and that comes from wrestling exactly and you'll think he won't be doing anything but all yeah. of a sudden he'll just run and and that's exactly what happened to Robbie Lawler exactly yeah you didn't they, they were it. just walking walking yeah. walking and boom yeah he just didn't adaptable. expect it very that he can obviously he can just adapt to to what's put in front of him, which is obviously one of his big strengths. Yeah, I think he, he's obviously got knockout power. He's proven it in a number of fights. Definitely, yeah. he's obviously got takedowns. He's proven that, and he's actually got a few submissions. Uh, there's a couple of wins where he's got a, a I think a dars choke and a an armbar. So he's he's got submission on the ground as well. But uh, the question mark is we're going to move to Till. Um, I suppose is Till's uh, takedown defence against a high level wrestler and also when he is down because generally wrestlers tend to take you down then take you down again take you down again because that's their, their main strength so uh, he may s- sort of snuff out two, three uh, takedowns but would it be five, six and if he keeps getting taken down will he be able to uh, actually get up every time and uh, Woodley's got a pretty decent ground and pound game as well Okay, so moving on to the sort of strengths of Till and Harvey could win. Starting off with Harvey. Um, I think obviously it's, for me it's just if the only way I see him winning is uh, if he lands that straight left hand. Um, he's got dynamite in that left hand that we've seen before uh, against numerous opponents. I mean, against Cerrone, he took him out with that left Which hand. Which is a classic southpaw punch, the yeah, yeah, right uh, left hand. Yeah. Move from the opponent's right hand and then a straight or overhand left hand from the uh, south pole, yeah. Yeah, as I said, you've seen it so many times in the UFC where if he lands that, that left hand flush, it, it does damage and it, it startles his opponent. And, and there on in, he can just go in for the kill. Um, <clears> but it's, it's, Do you think that's his, his, his only chance? Yeah, I believe so, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah that's fine. I so, yeah. Pretty boy? Yeah, I think uh, just to build on Harvey's point, his, his stand up is very, very good, I think. Um, he, he sh- he's shown it a few times in fights mm-hmm. where he will just uh, knock off a two, three, four punch conversation, combination and um, the opponent will be in a daze for a bit and like I said it happened with Cerrone and yeah. he ended up curling up in a ball in the corner and he just ground and pounded on him his it. attacks are not just aggressive they're yeah. like multi-angle yeah that's, he yeah. creates very yeah. different angles and people low kicks, high yeah, kicks, punches and people can't see yeah, it and then yeah. He'll just come with You'll see the first one or two after that, your brain just gives exa- up. Exactly, and then you Especially just, when you feel the pain as well. Exactly, and then you just don't know where he's coming yeah. from. Um, he's, he's got very good elbows as well. He's very. Yeah. In t- in t- when he's coming in close to the clinch, he'll just knock off some punches or elbows, and the, the opponent won't see it coming. Yeah, yeah. KV? I think for me, Till's uh, key to success oh. is to frustrate Woodley, uh, which is a very difficult thing to do. But I think. Uh, to draw upon the experience of Stephen Thompson's fight with Woodley, he kind of matched him in terms of his patience and it was a bit of a stalemate and Woodley didn't really want to engage. But I think what Till has to do is pick him off, be first, get the points, show the judges he's the one doing something, but also not overcommit him where he can get countered and potentially knocked out. So I think if he frustrates Woodley, keeps picking him off, I think Woodley then goes to the wrestling. If he can then hold his base and not be taken down, then it's perfect setup for the clean situations, and then that's when Till can really shine. Yeah, that's that's a good point, Gavey. Finishing off with the clinch because um, Till's martial art is Muay Thai, mm. 
and the Muay Thai clinches uh, with knees is one of the most effective things you can do. Uh, Anderson Silva versus uh, um, what's Franklin, the name? Franklin. Franklin, yeah, yeah, that that was a massive knees, yeah. So yeah, sorry. Another thing I think maybe we've missed is just the sheer size of Darren Till as well. Yeah, uh, uh, strength advantage. absolutely, yeah, but is that going to make a difference against someone like Woodley? I think so. When they when they came face to face in the press conference, yeah, the size. But I'm talking strength yeah. behind the size. I, I think I mean the reach is going to be there. Uh, They've actually got the same reach. Uh, oh, they? Seventy-four inches. Oh, that's weird. Because so, Till's six foot and yeah, Woodley's five, five eleven. eight, five nine. No, he's five eleven. Is he? Yeah, yeah he's quite deceiving. He's a bit smaller than that. I'm no, pretty so. sure he's five eleven, five ten. When but face off, there's a massive yeah, the size size is a good point. Uh, and if the reach is the same, which I'm not doubting, then that's going to be negated. But if you look at Till's earlier fights, he's, he's ragdolling opponents, yeah. literally yeah. throwing them around the cage. I just can't see him doing that to Woodley. No, no, no. Obviously, strength, strong, pure strength too, wise. Too, too. Yeah. Oh, right. are going to be a little bit. Yeah. The only thing that would probably be in his favour is if Woodley ties out and he's had a problem. He did, yeah, before. good point. But he's had five, three five round Rounders, fights yeah. in the last 18 months. But if you think about the. But he didn't do round, much against much Maya. Against yeah, him, yeah. And yeah. It, he, he was lasting, yeah, fair, fair enough. But he. he if he was but going Woodley like is going to be patient. I can't see Woodley yeah. rushing into anything or initiating or yeah. trying to get anything going. He'll he'll try to wait. I uh, think a lot of his inactivity isn't often to do with him being tired. It's just he literally waits for the opportunities. Yeah. He waits for sequences to happen. But he may be so getting fed up with the criticism. Yeah, and maybe try to be want to prove something. Yeah, yeah. Because in terms of the reach point, uh, normally you confer, um, you refer to the reach with the arms, but also the leg reach will be quite important. <laughs> Because yeah. Till, he's, he's, he's a kicker, but he's also six foot or something like that, so he's going to have longer legs than Woodley, I assume. But Woodley's got absolute power in those legs as well. He's yeah. got such devastating leg kicks. Um, I think he's used them before. I can't remember who he was doing it to. Um, he finished uh, Carlos Condit. Luke Condit. Yeah, with uh, kicked him, then took him down, and I think uh, Condit's ligament snapped. And I think he might have fought Jake Ellenberger as well when he was giving him leg kicks and just sweeping him off his feet got real power in those legs as well but I think Till uh, what he showed it with Thompson and Cowboy and, and a few other fights as well is that he tries to create uh, well he does create distance with his with his reach uh, but as KB said with his kicks you can still create distance as well um, and measure where your opponent is and also the he waves his arms a lot yeah. now is that well, Pretty Boy's point about confusion and as you come forward you don't know if he's going to actually punch with the right or the left or, or you know come in with a kick so I've noticed he, he waves his arms certainly against Thompson he did it a lot as well and is that part of his strategy or is it I don't think it'll be a nervous habit I think it'll be something he's trying to set up yeah I think he throws a lot of feints that's what he's trying to throw yeah. throw people off to see what he's going to basically do next and it's just I think he's trying to feel someone out in terms of yeah um, during the fight I think. I think the feints is a really good point but from the perspective of Woodley because um, he's really good with the feints as well. The way he ro- knocked out Robbie Lawler and the way he put um, Thompson down, he does this, um, it's almost a setup where he backs himself up against the octagon and then he throws like a 2-1 and follows with a massive overhand right. And it's like the first two punches are, are smoke screens just to dis- disorientate the opponent. Yeah. And he absolutely sprints forward and he tries to land a big punch. And he, he did it with Robbie Lawler at close distance. He was knocked out. When he did it with Wonder Boy, he just went flying across the octagon and, and managed to survive. To be fair to him, but yeah. it's, it's a really good technique he uses, and I wouldn't be surprised if he uses it against Till a couple of times. I wonder if it's uh, a bit too early for Till. He's, he's had four, mm. is it five UFC fights? Mm. I think it's yeah, Something yeah, like and six, two obviously. Well, one really high level welterweight in Stephen Boy Thompson, Wonder Boy, um, Wood uh, Cowboy. Yeah, you can't really call him a high-level welterweight. Obviously, he's a contender at 155, but uh, I'm just thinking it might be a bit too early. Maybe he was rushed with the Colby Covington thing and uh, the UFC giving him a push. Are they giving him a push too early? I don't know. It just seems it might be a bit too early for him. But uh, I think Woodley, from his perspective, he's been champion for two years. He's had three defences. Is he really... Is he really looking for a super fight? But maybe Covington, I wouldn't call Covington a super fight, but certainly a grudge fight. Does he really want to 
move up a weight or something or this is Woodley yeah. Woodley yeah I'm, I'm not sure about his motivation I think any fight that Woodley's involved in can't be a super fight yeah it's just, he's not well he hasn't done fight. enough himself he's and, just he's and not that sort of fighter where he's going to attract that, that name I think um, he's not a John Jones he's not, he's not been a prolific defender of the belt no yeah. I think sometimes he's, he gets a bit of harsh criticism against him mm. um, because like you said he's, he's done some real explosive things in back in the day like the way he knocked out Robbie Lawler and Robbie Lawler was going on a no one knocks out yeah, Robbie no Lawler one, he was on a, a, a yeah, win streak and everything three so, defences yeah. or something yeah. and he was he was the, the guy to beat and Woodley just put him away like he was nothing yeah, just put so, his lights out yeah, yeah. I, I just think sometimes it, it can be a bit unfair on him and just to say I know he'd had that fight with Damian Meyer but if you look at how he how a wonder boy is he's very awkward um, and to figure someone like him out is yeah. difficult so wonder boy was like uh, machida yeah exactly at yeah. his peak yeah. and the only pe- person that actually not well actually put him to sleep or actually beat him convincingly with john jones when he just choked him out but before that people were finding it hard against machida yeah yeah at that time no one could yeah. really work him out I completely agree with that point, um, and I think Woodley gets a lot of stick, as Pretty Boy was saying. And I think it's almost the Conor McGregor f- effect. If you're not talking trash, if you're not getting knockouts, then you're almost deemed a poor fighter. But I think Woodley's a really good fighter. Fights with his head as well, with intelligence, picks his moments, and he's really accomplished. And he's the champion of the division. And I think he he's he's looked at and targeted for his weaknesses or his flaws. And with the Damian Meyer fight, well. Engaging with Damian Meyer often ends up with you getting on the floor and him getting a very advantageous submission submission yeah, position. Yeah. So I think he did the right thing, um, but strategically, that, yeah, I think well he did the right thing to, yeah. to try to win because I think if you go aggressive against someone like Damian Meyer, you will end up on the floor. He does take you down. He almost tries to back you up against the cage and and drag you down because you saw his takedown attempts. Woodley smartly kept him in the middle of the octagon. So Damian Meyer was almost falling over him and it looked yeah. like poor attempts. But, it, it was but I, I don't think Woodley helps himself. I mean, when he won the belt off Robbie Lawler, he, the first thing he said was, I, I want a super fight or I want to pick so-and-so mm-hmm. a money fight. Well, my view is defend it two, three, four times, you know, convincingly, and then, then ask for things like that, not, not when you've just won it. But then, then I think, the, like uh, like uh, KB said, uh, the Conor McGregor effect. When he won the belt, um, he didn't defend it. He went straight to fight in Diaz, and then that was kind of like a, a super fight with the pay per view records. Yeah, but like Conor that. is a bona fide superstar. Yeah, Woodley's is. not you're, a superstar. You're right. He yeah. is. But and that's that's what that's, what I'm cross, that's cross the over. effect of like having the fighters trying to say. Because he's got that, I want that as well. So yeah. it's kind of just but you, coming as a that. fighter, you should realize where your status is. Obviously, Connor's been on the uh, Conan O'Brien show, and you can tell he's a, he's a crossover star. Mm-hmm. Woodley's, yeah, he, he's a, he's a star, but he's still in the MMA I community. Think the danger yeah. within fighting though is every fight could be your last fight, so it's almost you've, no, you've got think, to ask yeah. for those opportunities. Because if you look at Max Holloway, he's been knocking down champion after champion. Mm-hmm. I don't think he renegotiates his contracts that often or he has it today and now he's had some serious complications and there's almost question marks will he come back? He is actually we can say that he's fighting uh, on uh, when was it December the 8th in Toronto UFC 231 see if you can make the scales he's fighting uh, Brian Ortega again well not fighting again but they're going to try to do it this time so uh I presume by that uh, announcement on on the uh, on PurelyMMA.co.uk. Um, he must have got the clearance. There's no way they would announce a fight unless no. he's been cleared. So, best of luck to Max Blessed Holloway. Absolutely. Looking forward to that one. But uh, yeah, Woodley is a champion, but I've just never got the feeling he's like a prolific champion. He, he, he's, he's he's always moaning, which is not yeah. always good. Uh, but yeah, he's, he's definitely got the skills. He wouldn't be where he is. He's got knockout power. He's he's a top-notch wrestler and uh, yeah it's going to be uh, it's going to be one hell of a fight but in terms of the actual um, predictions uh, so we you sort of given your case for and against um, moving with uh, starting with uh, Harvey have you got a prediction for this uh, like I said uh, previously I think it's going to be a really close fight um, both have strong arguments for for winning I think um, for me, I'll, I'm going to go and stick my neck out and say Darren Till. Ooh. Um, okay. It's, Any um, reason for that? Any uh, particular reason? Yeah, that straight left hand. Straight left hand. Yeah. Law of averages, he's going he's gonna, to he's gonna land one. and um, He's going to throw enough. He's going to throw enough and he's yeah. going to land one. And I think every single time he's, he's, he's hit someone 
on the button with that left hand, it's caused damage. Do you want to stick your neck out a bit further and predict a round? Uh, maybe third round. Third Ooh. round. We'll go third round because I think, like I said, Woodley will just feed him out for the first couple of rounds. Yeah. We won't mind if it's boring. I think also. You thing, think he'll get caught? Yeah. I you think can only run so much. I think he'll get caught. I think he'll get all tired. I think the size factor will be a big thing as well. They just when they went face to face, they didn't look as if they should be fighting in the same division. Well, they won't be in the same weight class, no. probably. So I just, on I the just, night, it was just the, the size difference was just starting. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I think. And have you got as a resident bookie? Have you got any odds for us or? Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, obviously, I think uh, Woodley Woodley was favourite, right? Uh, I think it was. Uh, yeah. Which is understandable. He's 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 a veteran and he's done it and seen it. Number four and obviously Darren. What was he six to four or something? Or? Something like sixty four, sixty five. Um, they're and, quite close. Yeah, there's not much in it, but mm. obviously, and then you've got the, the hungry Darren Till. So mm. uh, understandable that it's a close fight. You don't think it's too early for Till then? Obviously, not necessarily. No, I think um, it's look. He looks as if he's he's, he's not very he's phased by little. Um, so. But yeah. yeah, I think he's sort of born for this stage. So I'm going to go yeah, on. that's a good point. It's uh, Till's one of those guys that just take the moment and just run with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, some people get consumed by that moment, but yeah. I think Till is uh, he'll just run with it and be his normal self. And uh, okay, so I'm going to write this down. So, yeah, uh, absolutely. So Till third round, we'll just call it a TKO. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. That's Harvey. Pretty boy. Um, I'm going to have to agree with Harvey on this one. Uh, I think Till will just get the win um, based on... Uh, I know I said uh, Woodley is a very good fighter and he's got all the strength, but he's been act- inactive for quite a while. Um, and wasn't he... Com- uh, shoulder surgery. Shoulder yeah, surgery. he's coming yeah. off from the shoulder yeah. surgery. Yeah, yeah. So I just think that mixed with him being inactive and Till's been very active over the last 18 months. Yeah, He's got... He's, he's been in training camps and he's been fighting for a while so I think that will give him the advantage so I think uh, how the fight will play out will Woodley will try and fill him out and then I think Till will start picking him off and it will be in a situation where Woodley's behind and he, he might make a, make a mistake and he might walk onto one of those lefts but I just generally think that it will go five rounds but I think Till will get the decision so by decision yeah okay Okay, boy. Uh, I think um, this could bring up another debate around the table itself, but I think for me, Darren Till's weight cut is a massive uh, kind of obstacle. Big question mark. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and I know he's publicly said that he's going to change it up this time and and get rid of a lot of the weight earlier on, so he's got less of a challenge in weight cut. Which I think one that's going to be a very new experience stepping into the octagon, doing a new process, and mm-hmm. two I think he's going to carry through less power. Um, so so he'll um, lose too much weight and not regain it yeah. to keep the power and I think yeah. he's almost going to be out of his normal sorts and feel a bit weird about that so I think Tyron Woodley's going to knock him out I think he's going to counter punch him he's going to catch uh, Till coming in and I think he's going to throw two feints overhand right and I think he's, he's not going mm. to be able to recover I think it's going to be like Stephen Thompson got caught both in both fights with the same same kind of technique and I think Till's going to get caught with it and I think Woodley's going to get the knockout Okay, you want to predict a round? Or? I think it will happen later on after a bit of frustration happens. So I think Four or five? No, I'll go for five. Yeah, yeah I think it's going to be the final round. Yeah, okay. Okay, yeah, this is a, a close one. There's been good arguments either side. I think uh, question mark for Till is the weight cut and the defensive t- uh, sort of takedown defences and how many times you can actually defend a takedown. Um for question marks against Woodley are the inactivity, the shoulder surgery. Um, but I, I just think it's a bit too early for Till. Um, yeah, he, he can ride with the moment, but uh, in in the welterweight division, he hasn't faced the best of the best, really. He's, he's jumped from, I know Thompson was a number one contender, but uh, there were circumstances behind that. Um, so I don't think he's really... Uh, really got to his craft and, and moulded it in with the best in the welterweight division. So I think it's too early and I think uh, Woodley will probably uh, bring back his takedown strategy more in force and, and probably go for two or three every round for two reasons. One's to obviously take him down but also to make him tired because if he does get up it, you do get very tired getting back up. Yeah, definitely. Um, so fatigue factor and if if Till has had a bad weight cut 
and he's lost too much weight or he's lost it too quickly or right at the last minute, your energy is going to be zapped. So uh, I'm going to go for Woodley and I'm not sure whether to go TKO or uh, Decision. Um, but I'm going to go TKO and I'm going to say late as well and I'll say four or five just to spread my bets a bit. Four or five. But um, yeah, okay. So we've got our predictions. So to recap, uh, you haven't changed your mind, Harvey, no? No. I'm just uh, okay, you just give you your last chance. Third round. <laughs> uh, so Harvey's got uh, Till in the third round. Yeah. We'll say three. Of... Give me a price boost. <laughs> oh, you're after a price boost. <laughs> price boost on uh, Woodley. Yeah. We'll, uh, we'll come back to that. Then uh, Pretty Boy's got Till with Decision. Yeah. Uh, KB's got Woodley with uh, fifth round TKO and I've got uh, yeah four or five TKO okay so that wraps up the preview of UFC 228 which is uh, Tyrone Woodley versus Darren Till and we're going to move on to our next uh, preview which is going to be a boxing match and uh, so we are at MMA show but we cover combat sports in general and we're going to go with Canelo versus Triple G2 and uh, most of you may remember the first one was September last year and uh, finished in a controversial draw well controversial some people anyway and um, there's also been things happening since then they should have fought on uh, Cinco de Mayo 5th of May uh, but um, Canelo had some problems with some beef he didn't have a beef. Horse meat, wasn't it? <laughs> was he horse meat? Horse no, it was, it was beef. beef. Yeah, yeah. He didn't have a beef. He had a problem with beef. Yeah. So in Mexico, with some uh, drugs that shouldn't be there, clenbuterol, uh, name one. And uh, anyway, it's back on, and it's in September, and um, we're just going to have a, a bit of a, a chat about that. So uh, I'll go with Pretty Boy as the uh, the boxing coach in the in the room, and. Uh, What's your thoughts on? First of all, should the, let's just play devil's advocate. Should the rematch have happened with what what went on for a for a fighting spectacle? Yes, I mean, two absolutely brilliant fighters uh, coming together to make a some would call it a super fight because of their status. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. it's absolutely a super fight. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think definitely for that boxing spectacle itself, it, for the fans, it definitely should happen. And then we're going on the fact that. Because he's been caught for this contaminated meat, as you said earlier. Um, ethically, should he be allowed to fight a year after being caught? Some would say no, he shouldn't, and some would say yes, just because nobody really knows if it was he was it was a contamination or if it was just him taking. Yeah, some we'll, we'll never know. But, we know yeah, yeah. but we are where we are, so let's talk exactly. about the. The fight? Yeah, I think it's it's an interesting one again. From the last one... Um, just, uh, did you think the last one was a draw? Just to get your take on it. Uh, no, I didn't think it was a draw. Uh, that one judge's scorecard was ridiculous. Oh. <laughs> so, uh, I don't think it was a draw. I think Triple G should have got it on a split decision. Okay. Um, right. But uh, it, what did what it did show in the last fight is that Canelo could take a massive punch, but then but. so can Triple G. <laughs> so, uh, I, I don't see it playing out. And was Canelo having different meat now? So, will that have an effect? <laughs> that, could, that could well happen, yeah. But I think this time around, it will, it will play out. I think it will play out the same, but then the, the decision will be different. I think Triple G will come through this time. Okay. Uh, Harvey, give us your initial thoughts and we'll go through the individual skill sets. And sure. Um... I think, obviously, I think it should go ahead. I think the fans want it. Um, I'm definitely um, going to be watching and tuning in. So, yeah, it should go ahead. Obviously, what Canelo's done is going to slightly overshadow uh, what's going to obviously yeah. immense, but it is what it is. Yeah. But, yeah, definitely should go ahead, and I think um, it will be a, a great spectacle again. And I think, again, like Pretty Boy said, I think um, Triple G might have, have the better of him this time. Okay. Uh, KV? Um yeah, it's, it's, it's a difficult one to call. I think there's two key factors to me, and it, and it goes with the first fight as well. It's almost Alvarez's name has, has got a big brand attached to it, and, and that sometimes can influence scorecards, etc. Um, so I think, for me, with the age discrepancy as well, and as Golovkin gets older, and Canelo kind of edges to the age of prime all the time, because he's a young guy still, uh, 
I think it might be about 28. Yeah, it? mid to so late 20s. Yeah. Uh, so Triple think, G's 34, 35. Yeah, he's 26 or something. Yeah, I think, is, yeah. No, I think Alvarez is about 28. Yeah. Um, I think he's really but Alvarez has had more, uh, more boxing fight, rounds yeah. and fights. Yeah. So I think, um, yeah, as time goes on, I think Alvarez becomes the favourite just in terms of, I think, um, Triple G will start seeing the effect of slowing down a bit. I mean, he's a power fighter and he absolutely hits hard as anything. But as Pretty Boy was saying, Alvarez seemed to take some of the shots and he was all right with it. So I think it, it will play out similar to the first one and I think Alvarez will just get that more output going forward and uh, kind of pick up where he slowed down in, in the middle rounds before. So I, I think Alvarez is a good decision. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, I think what surprised me with Alvarez last time was his defence and the way he evaded some of Triple, D's, Triple G's punches. And uh, especially when uh, Alvarez was against the uh, the ropes and he was sort of bobbing and weaving uh and he, you know, he done he done a good job. So, uh, yeah, and as you said, he took some pretty good shots. Um, and uh, I think what Triple G will try to do, he will try to make Alvarez more aggressive, and try to come out and uh, goad Tri- uh, Alvarez into making it a more attacking fight. Whereas Alvarez's first mode of uh, sort of um, operation was defense first, sort of back up, back up, back up. And his defence was amazing. It did surprise me. I've not really seen him do that in other fights. Maybe because he's been so dominant, he do not need to show it. So, uh, yeah, it's definitely a tough one to call. I'll probably go with Triple G. I think with the controversy with with Canelo, something's going to change in his regime of diet, nutrition, etc. Um, and I think that will have a detrimental effect to how his preparation was to the fight last year when whatever he was eating was working and uh, but I think the testing and that will take its toll so I don't think he'll be able to put that kind of weight on and keep that fat off because um, Clen Brutarol is a, is a weightlifting drug generally weightlifters used to take it and the effect is it does pack on loads of muscles and, and sort of uh, take off fat so effectively you're gaining lean muscle and strength um, so uh yeah but you know it was it was in the meat so uh but uh our prediction wise i'm going to go for triple g k o and i think it's going to be late in the rounds because i think canelo will get tired and uh triple g will catch him in the 10 to 12 rounds so let's finish off with official uh Predictions, KV, just give us, and again, just Yeah, for the same reasons, um, for me, that was mentioned before, I think for me, Alvarez will get the decision. I think uh, his name carries some weight in terms of, for the judges' impressions, but I think uh, Triple G will start to slow down, uh, and Alvarez is going to pick up. Decision. Yeah, so you get a point to victory, I think. Yeah. Pretty boy? I think it'll be a Triple G decision as well. Well, Yeah. From... Going on from the last time when he yeah. should have got the decision, I think it will be the same this time. You think it'll be the right decision? Yeah, this I think. Time. It, yeah, yeah, I think it should be well. Yeah, hopefully. Anyway, without the controversy of the dodgy scoring, as Jack said, he as um, Katie said, he's got a Alvarez has got a very good big brand name. Uh, what do you think if that same judge is going to be there? Would you change your mind? You're going to oh, look at the judges yeah, before yeah, the fight. That's, that's, uh, <laughs> might change my mind just before the fight. Yeah. What was no. her name? Adelaide Bird. Yeah, Adelaide. she's uh, she's the uh, uh, the wife of uh, one of the referees. Oh, ah, right. Yeah, yeah. And he's well, a good referee. Oh, well. yeah, yeah. The he was yeah. The, uh, the referee for the world champion. champion. Yeah, he was. Yeah, uh, yeah. He's a he's a, yeah. He's a very experienced. Referee, so, yeah. yeah. But yeah, hopefully she's not there and doesn't cause the same controversy. I think <laughs> Triple G decision. Okay, Harvey, last but not least. Yeah, I'm going to go with uh, Triple G. Oh, okay. Um, You're outnumbered, Katie. Yeah, I think Triple G might just have a bit too much for him. Yeah. He showed Triple G he could take whatever Canelo threw at him, it didn't hurt him. So I'm going to go Triple G, maybe knock out uh, in the latter rounds. You got any odds for us as a resident bookie? Uh, I believe Triple G is favourite. Any um, six to what? Officially, I don't hundred percent know. Yeah, maybe we can check that. Um, but yeah, I, I just think he's he's shown. I think a few times in the, in the previous fight, he took every single shot that Canelo could throw at him, and he kept coming forward. And I think a sign of a fighter coming forward. I think Triple G will have to be a bit more patient because he, he did get a bit wild and he was missing, which, yeah. which might have made yeah. Canelo look better than. But he, mm. to be fair to Canelo, he was really evading it well. 
he's a great counter puncher that's what he does yeah, yeah. So just on the odds uh, yeah. Paddy Power I've got Golovkin at 8.15 and Alvarez oh. at 6 to 4 Okay, that's quite quite a big discrepancy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eight to fifteen on. Yeah, yeah, six to four against. Yeah. Okay, we're not encouraging anyone to to place a bet. We're just uh, for educational purposes only. So, uh, and if you do it, do it responsibly. <laughs> bet responsibly, like Harvey does. I do. Look for the price boost. The price boost. Yeah. Speaking look, of which if uh, if there's an Alvarez price boost, will you uh, change your mind on the day, <laughs> or would you flip yeah. flip and flop in a two horse race? You know. <laughs> <laughs> you have been known to flip and flop. In a two-horse race, you can't you can't look past one person. Okay, excellent. So, um, yeah, that that uh, brings us to the the end of the podcast. So, thank you guys for uh, popping by and giving your opinions on uh, UFC two two eight, which is Woodley versus Till and uh, Canelo versus Triple G. In next month's episode, we'll preview uh, the small fight of. Uh, Khabib Nurmagomedov versus Conor McGregor, which is happening on October the 6th. I think it's in Las Vegas, yeah. uh, pay-per-view. So uh, we'll have a special show probably focusing just on that fight. But uh, it's starting to build up as a, a really good card. Tony Ferguson has been announced against Anthony Pettis. Mm-hmm. Is that potentially cover for one of them falling? Um, who knows? But uh, it's, uh, it's, I think it's a good fight for Ferguson to come back. But Petty showed, you know, in his last fight against Michael Chiesa that uh, he had a good submission. So is he coming back? It's uh, it's a bit too early to say. So, uh, yeah, this has been the MMA Shower episode 11, uh, sponsored by HattonJamesLegal.co.uk. And just to finish off with the uh, how you can contact the show. So you can contact the show at the MMA Show 7 at the MMA Show 7 at gmail.com. Always enjoy your emails. Uh, the Twitter handle is at G the MMA Shower at G the MMA Shower, and the Facebook page is Let's Talk MMA. Let's talk at Let's Talk MMA, and uh, as I said, I'm writing for uh, www.purelymma.co.uk. That's purelymma.co.uk. So once again, thanks for listening, and uh, have a good day wherever you are.